Or usually after two hours, you're not very productive. I'll, I'll sit back, I'm sorry. Okay. But usually a couple hours at a time? Yeah, and after that it becomes, you know, <coughs> difficult to concentrate, yeah. <laughs> you're not fresh. Oh, are we starting? Yes. Are you ready? Do you need a moment? Let's go and Let's go. wing it. Let's do it. Somebody go over here. Did you hit the exit? Oh, sorry. The gun's sneak up. Well, it's gone. Okay. Uh, you can put it right on the floor right there if you want. Right here? <coughs> okay. Everybody happy? Everybody gone? Uh, you guys ready? Yes? Okay. Ready? Then you are, Phoebe. Hi, Michael and Bill. <laughs> I was just wondering, uh, where did you all find each other? Uh, I know you were from Athens, Georgia, but... It was a kitchen, wasn't it? You yeah. were in a kitchen? <laughs> we were in a kitchen at a party, yeah. A dark kitchen. That's like all four of you were in the kitchen at the same time, or...? Well, three of us. A girl introduced me to uh, Peter and Michael and uh, hit it off right away, sort of. I liked his eyebrow, so we decided <laughs> to form a band. The eyebrow worked, so <laughs> great. Uh, do, you, do you really hate me? Same house. <laughs> All the time I say that. So what is it about Athens, Georgia? I mean, you know, there's so much is starting to come out of there. Is this like the new Greenwich Village or something? I mean, what? what? Yes. Yes. No. That's it. <laughs> What's going on down there? I mean, is it the water? What's going on with you guys? It's not the water. It's hot, and there's not a lot to do, essentially. I mean, there's a school there, so there are a lot of people, you know, the same interests, same background. Pretty is much. it an art school? or? That's, well, that's down there. it's a regular college. The art school is kind of well known, I think. Um, but it's just real boring down there. There's not anywhere around. The city Atlanta. itself is boring, but the people that live there are a lot of fun. So you get together and have parties and listen to records and form bands. And create it. Yeah. Create your own entertainment. That's the way to go. Well, something good's happening down there. So uh, I won't ask you where the, you got the name, but I had heard that you all, when you were deciding what to be called, went through a lot of different names, or at least you had a lot of choices and some interesting choices. We stayed true? up all night, one night, and wrote all the choices on the wall. And at, at the very end of the evening, when the sun was starting to come up, we threw an eraser or something, and it hit REM. And, and it hit REM. Stuck with it. That's a great way to choose it, I think. <laughs> uh, now, your music is really refreshing you know, compared to like all the techno pop things that are going on now. Do you think it's because of just being so different from what has sort of been the mainstream right now, 1984? Is that why people are so, so excited about you? Uh, I think that helps. I think, um, not that we're huge or anything, but our first popularity came from people that, you know, kind of like the older stuff anyway. And I think the critics like it and wrote about it or whatever, and now people are, you know, willing to listen to it. and. Some of them like it, not everybody, but and I think that is, you know, a big factor. John Cougar, I think, is the same thing. Yeah, you know, he's like real grassroots, you know, back to the basics, and he's doing real well. I like him a lot. I don't think that we're, you know, in being not a synthesizer band or, or whatever, just kind of doing what we do. I don't think we're really, like some people suggested, spearheading some huge new, new vanguard. Or anything like that. Well, I guess if you were, you'd have no control over it anyway. Probably. I mean, it would happen because of some other people being influenced by you. I think I think uh, influence from from outside of the people that you actually write and play with uh, uh, can be real good or real bad. I think in this case, it's real good. And in the case of a lot of some of the newer bands that are coming out, um, there's kind of this incestuous swapping of ideas and. and and uh, a lot of times that really works to the advantage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I understand that. Uh, I know you just said before, well, we're not that big, but you are, you know, the critic's choice, so to speak. I mean, I've, I've read Which is your... usually the kiss of death. Oh, no! <laughs> well, that's thank that's you so all funny. When you, uh, I've been around a lot of artists that never could be the critic's choice <laughs> and would die to be that, but no, that's funny. Do you feel that, that like, because all these, these critics are coming out of the walls going wacky over you that, that it might be a, a negative well, thing? Well, it's nice, it's flattering, and it helps, but it doesn't, you know, traditionally, the track record of the past has, you know, shown us that 
you know, critics' choice bands don't always make it really big commercially, but that's fine with us anyway. I'd rather be a critics' choice than you know, a sellout commercial top ten group. Just the fact that we're probably able to go almost anywhere in this country anyway, and play to a fair amount of people, is is enough for me that we're not just a critics' band. You know, we, we have a lot of people out there who like to see us too, yeah. so that kind of helps. Uh, okay, what, what are some of your influences? Like, just one at a time, personally, what inspired you musically? Well, originally oh. Motown, stuff that my older brothers and sisters listened to, and then the Beatles, and then after that I was just lost on it. I've liked everything since then. I listened to the radio a lot growing up, too. But, you know, I like everything from, you know, Slim Whitman to Motley Crue, pretty much. Oh, wow. He, he'll tell you something completely different. <laughs> I, I guess I listened to the radio a lot too, but I lived in some pretty weird places like Texas, and uh, there's a lot of country music down there. And if, you, if it wasn't country, it was gospel or bubblegum. Um, the first real music that was kind of inspiring to me was, was uh, the stuff coming out of New York in, in the mid-70s, television and Patti Smith sure. and the Ramones. And they, they all mentioned they all cited their influences being people like the Velvet Underground and the New York Dolls. So that kind of all fell together. That was a, a really, I was in New York at that time, and that was pretty exciting. It felt like something was really going to happen. I wonder how many other 15-year-old kids were you know, living in middle America and really wanted to move to New York and hang out in, on the Bowery, which is, I know, with you know, Richard you see Hell it now and Patty. And <laughs> I had an Arlo Guthrie single when I was a kid. I guess, you know, he's kind of a folk singer. His father was anyway. But I bought it at the same time as I bought a Wolfman Jack single, so that gives you an idea <laughs> how much taste I had at the time. But well, I, I think being a kid, you have a lot of diverse things. I mean, you can like anything, you know, you're not like just into one thing. The older I got, the more specific I got. But as a kid, you could have that. That's great. All right, you all were just on a European tour. Where, when did you go to Europe? Was that? We got back about six weeks ago, right? Yeah. We were there for six June. weeks. So 12 weeks ago, we got there. <laughs> Stayed April. there for six weeks. I don't even know what April. month this is. It was April. I know. Uh, when you're so busy, you must... April in Paris. April in Paris? It was miserable, you know. Why was it miserable? <laughs> because, well, I won't say it. It's a big, dirty town. There are French people there. They, And you don't speak French, so I'm sure they were like... It was wild time, really. Could you not order food? That's... When I was yeah, like, that's they wouldn't like take your order. So, yeah. And you can learn pidgin French, and they don't like that. And if you speak English, they don't like that. So there's no way around. Well, those French people—they're just out of here. Oh, we <laughs> as far love as we're them. concerned, we love them. <laughs> okay, but oh, well, okay. Let's take the audience as opposed to the uh, <laughs> the Actually, people in the restaurants. In Paris, what was that Paris, like? we're we're popular in Paris, and the, and the fans are really great. Yeah, so that was good. How, how Holland and Germany and. Britain, Great Britain, we're, we're all really receptive to us as well. They see us as college boys, or some American, you know, typical yeah, we were, college Yeah, we were boys. described in one, I think it was an Amsterdam paper, as field hippies or cactus field hippies or something. They, they don't understand long hair there, I don't think. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> they will. I heard that you made uh, an independent film. Can you tell me something about that? Yeah, we um, collaborated with a a filmmaker, painter, who teaches at the University of Georgia, Jim Herbert, on uh, uh, five songs from the new record, and he makes these amazing films, and he filmed us in a um, place in Georgia uh, that is owned by Mr. Miller, who makes whirligigs, and he has this huge hill with five or six hundred whirligigs on it, and so we took Jim down there, and he filmed us walking around, and learning how to make whirly gigs and then edit it together. Whirly gigs are the weather vanes that twirl in the wind. And yeah. he, can make, he can throw them together in like 10 minutes and uses diff all these different materials. It's, it's really amazing. To see 600 of them blowing at one time on the hill is really amazing. He's just recently started making goats and sheep, and they're all, but they're all male goats and sheep because they all have little penises. You know, so <laughs> to put in your yard or something like that, or just to have well, out there? You, put them, you can put them on your roof, or you can put them in your garden, and they keep moles away, and they also keep the birds away. They keep moles away because the vibration goes. The vibration down into the goes down into the ground. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I think I need one of those. 
<laughs> well, he doesn't have any malls there, I bet. No. <laughs> uh, you made a music video and uh, played live. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, in, in the studio. Which is sort of the antithesis of the whole video trend, which what, is yeah. slick production. The whole lip syncing kind of uh, breaking mirrors and, and girls with lots of leg and, and uh, you know, which I like a lot, but I don't think that in a context of a, of a rock song, it, it has much to do visually with, with the music. We just have trouble warming up to the, you know, what the usual, you know, video concepts are today. I mean, as far as related to us, you know, I can watch MTV and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I like those things, but I have trouble seeing us, and we all do, doing those sort of things, so. It's kind of a perverse enjoyment, though, I, I would think. I mean, I wouldn't want to categorize myself with any of the people who have anything to do with that, including Michael Jackson. Well, Just kidding. Everybody's got an opinion, and that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michael. Michael Jackson has one, too, I'm sure. But he's not here today. He didn't even want to be involved in the folk rock thing, no. I can't believe it. <laughs> All right. Uh, La. I heard that you all get together in one room and that's how you write your material. How long are you in that room? I mean, what does it take to put it together and what made you decide that that's the way it's gotta be done? We don't practice very much, but when we do, when we do decide to write songs, we just block out about a week and we go in for about two hours a day and just kind of throw things up against the wall and see what sticks and a lot of things stick sometimes. It's not totally off the cuff. We don't just sit there and look at each other and say, OK, well, what are we going to do now? We usually sit at home and you know, come up with ideas and then go in and collaborate and exchange ideas and songs come together. It's very much a democracy. That's great. It's tough, though, isn't it, that way a little bit? Or? Well, we've, we've never done it any other way, so I don't know. I think if you put the four of us together, you, you probably come up with the sum total of one person's good taste, so it, it kind of evens itself out. Maybe that's why. Stuff turns out so good. Yeah, whatever. Thank you. Uh, boom. You can't ever find printed lyrics of your songs. You're right. And why is that? Another stalwart opinion. You're so opinionated, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> lyric sheets, and I've been told this, I've never even heard the record, but lyric sheets started with the Beatles' White album, is that right? Well, I think it, it was a silly concept from the beginning. And um, rock lyrics are words that go along with songs. And to separate the words from the song is like taking that dress off of you and expecting it to be as pretty as it is on you right now. And it, it wouldn't be. Or reading a movie them. script well, without seeing the movie at the same time. Personally, I like his description much, <laughs> but that is so sweet. No, no, but no, I know what you mean. It, I guess that does make sense. And people have a tendency to, to look into the, the lyrics or the words as, as poetry or as, as a little bit deeper than So you don't how consider intended. lyrics poetry, at least? It's a part of a song. It and, is a, and to remove it from that, yeah. from that is, is not and good. And the thing is, you can still like a song and not understand the lyrics, but you can hate a song just because you understand the lyrics and don't like them. I mean, it may bother that you don't understand it, but you may listen to it a few times and just say, well, okay, I can't understand the lyrics, I'll make up my own or something. I've liked a lot of bands just hearing them and, and gone and seen their, their records with the, with the words printed on them and just kind of went, oh, phew, you know, this is bad. Mm -hmm. there's, there's really not much excuse for it. Television can pull it off. Their Marky Moon had good yeah. words, but that's the, that's the only example I can really think of. Bob Dylan could probably pull it off. I got Highway 61 revisited last year and listened to it. And I, I think that's a really... That's poetry. 15 years after its release, but... I guess that means they had some staying power. <laughs> yeah, it's still good. Can you, help, can you think of something else that you want to be uh, Yes, okay. I insist. <laughs> you Let's realize talk about you're, you're this. talking to the two here that never do <laughs> interviews. So. But I fish sometimes. I'm gonna have to borrow. I love this. This is a uh, mold pile. It's a minnow bucket. Right. And I guess you can hang it off your belt or something while you're waiting and leave it in the water. Does that attract fish to it, or you just keep them fresh that way? Is that? 
This is Keith and Crash. This is Michael's bag, and I am it's very, very envious of it. It's total. The airline people don't like it, though. They look at oh, they, really? they the didn't raised like eyebrows. They, they always, they always think I'm smuggling. <laughs> <laughs> smuggling minnows into New York City. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How can you do that? <laughs> we'll put them in the sewer system. All right. Well, I gotta. Oh, I guess we should make note of this appliance behind. Lovely us. bicycle. Your bicycle. This is my bike. Yeah. Michael takes this everywhere. Is that it? Yeah, he rides behind the bus on it. Yeah. He, he rides stays in it. shape. <laughs> no, actually, we've we've been in a van up until this point, up until now, and now we have a, a bus, a coach, and so there's a lot of room on it, so I thought I'd take advantage of that and take my bicycle, so I don't have to depend on anyone else to get me around. Great. And it's a beauty. It sure is a beauty. Is. What a vintage item. White walls on It's a one speed, but the gear ratio is just perfect. I love that bike. All right, thank you guys so much. And thank you. if you guys are the ones that are not the good interviews or whatever you say, you never do interviews, I gotta say you did great. Prepare yourself for Peter. Oh no. Yeah. The myths get like larger and the larger <laughs> as, as the years go by. So it's getting they wild. grow and expand. Is that true? It's very true. Am I, I supposed to not believe anything he says now? Uh, <laughs> no comment. No comment. And even let me get pierced ears because she said I would look like a gypsy. So. Oh, no. <laughs> I still have virgin ears underneath all this. So. We have speed. Thank you. Are you okay? Uh, boom, boom, boom. Okay. <sighs> Can you tell me something about this church that you all lived in at one time? With the Reverend, did a, does the Reverend, uh, I guess his name is Howard Finster? Reverend Finster. No, these are two different churches entirely. Really? You guys have a thing about it. Church? <laughs> There's a lot of churches in, in the South. It's it's a Bible Belt, as you know, and Athens is the buckle of the belt. And um, the Southern Baptists very much run a lot of what what happens down there politically and religiously and otherwise. Um, but the the church that you're talking about uh, is a place where Peter and I lived, and then Bill moved in with us, and Mike moved in, and that's kind of how the band got started. Um, we had a roommate who threw herself a birthday party and wanted a band to play, so we just wrote 15 songs and played the party. Make it sound so easy. The floor broke. The floor broke, yeah, the, you know, the floor fell through. It was a huge through. church with a box thrown in the front half, which was the apartment, I mean, really cheap, thin walls. Then you walked through a tunnel in the back room and came out into the church, and the altar was on the opposite end. We set up on the altar and played, and people danced and stole our kegs. We lost about $180 keg, beer keg equipment that night. So we invited about 70 people and about 600 showed up. Oh. So, um, There's a but message that's in typical, there. typical Athens party, I guess. So then we had to start, keep playing to pay for the $180, so maybe that's why we're here. Thank goodness that happened. That floor was weak. There was, a, it was. something there. How soon after that did you all uh, put together a single that you, I guess you produced it yourself? And what was the name of that? Yeah, with the help of Mitch Easter, who's produced everything we've done up till now. That came out, I guess, about a year after that, right? Yeah. What was, was it in the summer? I it was, it was August, um, in 81. August of 81? Yeah. We, uh, we, needed, we needed a record out to, to send around to clubs so that they would let us play there. Because we had pretty much, up, up until we released a single, just played around the southeast. And nobody would let us play any farther out than that because we didn't have a record. So we decided to make one, and uh, we made this, the single in it. And our erstwhile manager, Jefferson Holt, uh, he had just started working for us at that point. He was really, without our knowledge, he was sending them out to critics and the record companies and stuff. And uh, Robert Palmer, just by complete surprise, listed it as one of his 10 top favorite singles of the year for 81. So that did a lot. But then the record company started. Attention. Well, I read an article about Robert Palmer, I guess that one that he just wrote about you guys in the Times. Right. That, and he certainly does love you, which is really great. Uh, this is a kind of an offbeat question, but you don't have telephones. I think I really admire that a lot. Is that true? None of you have telephones? No. Just don't believe in it. Well, there's a telephone. We all live pretty much on the same street, and there's a magic market at the end of the street, and there's a telephone there. There's three of them there. So, so you can almost all be making a phone call at the same time. At the same time, time. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a great wa way to fight the phone company, which I think deserves fighting. So that I agree. Yeah, now they have. Now they say thanks for uh, using AT&T when you make yeah. collect calls. Yeah, like, yeah. Great. Thank you. Oh no. Here's a you have all these other options now, so there's the starting to be polite. And the thing about the uh, playing acoustic. Okay. The name? What name? No, they, look, no, they we don't want to do ask that. that. I've, yeah. already, I've already spoken with them. Don't they don't. Yeah. It's a People shouldn't assume so much. I really think you should just like, and every every time somebody asks you, you should just make up a different lie. That's all. There's we have we have some good replacements for REM, none of which we can say on television. I've heard they're the dirty quality. <laughs> okay, John, you got about thirty seconds. You can go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, since your music is sort of influenced by that folk rock sound or whatever, I, I was just wondering if at home when you're working on songs, do you use acoustic instruments? A whole lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody sits in their little bedrooms and plunks away on guitars. Except me, I don't play guitar. I play accordion and I play harmonica very badly. Um, Spoons? <laughs> Spoons. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that hee haw thing. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're thinking about working acoustic guitars in the set somehow. We're not exactly how sure how we're going to do it for the right songs, you know, specifically for that, or decide what songs we already played now that would be suitable for it. But it's something where Michael brought it up and everybody thought it was a good idea, so something we might look for. So. In the earlier touring days, we, we used to call up these clubs and they would say, What kind of music do you play? And we had no answer to that because we didn't want to be, we didn't want to say punk because they certainly wouldn't have, we weren't a punk band. New Wave is entirely moot. Um, rock and roll doesn't say much. We're not heavy metal. So we said folk rock. And three years ago that had no meaning to it whatsoever. You know, people would just go, huh? And they'd, they'd think, Joni Mitchell, you know, what? Okay, fine. Sure, we'll hire you. So we'd go and play. And now it's kind of, you know, it's got this whole new meaning because there's all these bands that are, that are, that really are, I think, influenced by all that stuff, and I guess we're one of them. <laughs> Who influences your vocal style? I was wondering. People refer to it as haunting. I saw Ghostbusters yesterday. It's really and that was... like, <laughs> Bill Murray actually referred to it yeah. as haunting. And <laughs> not there's no one uh, performer or person in particular. I don't. I think my vocal style, unquote, probably came more out of trying to work with what kind of music these guys were playing than anything else. A lot of times they would play real fast songs and I would slow the vocals down so that to kind of even things out and that kind of turned itself into you know, the syrupy drudge that we hear day in and day out now. He really loves Boxcar Willie though. <laughs> Boxcar Willie. Yeah. I love his wardrobe myself. <laughs> I like Patsy Cline, you know, Hank Williams, oh, yeah. uh, Kitty Wells, Tammy Wynette and George Jones. Um, Conway Twitty, a lot of the older musicians like that are, um, really had this kind of amazing emotional impact in their yeah, voices. Right. Whether the songs were like that or not, a lot of times I think they were just children's tales or whatever, but um, you really got a feeling listening to them. And I like that idea. Thank you guys. Oh, certainly. I'm going to do one, two more things just for uh, stop. Kind of Jan, Barry is Jan and Dean. Mm -hmm. Just, I always say Barry is in strawberry. Strawberry. You can never forget it. I swear I'm going to name my son Raz. Yes, <laughs> Or Barry is his toothpaste. Okay. Oh, wow. I don't know if you remember that cartoon. <laughs> it's just one of those you, for good luck, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. press them up. Fitting. Thank you. Oh, let's go. We're ready? Wait, one more second. Thank you. Could you just move over a little bit more towards center? Yeah. Just sit and move your whole body and mind. That's it. Thanks. Okay. And 
go turn away from the camera. And then I, right. yeah, and it'll be like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so dainty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. Uh, I am beyond thrilled to be sitting here right now with two very attractive gentlemen from the band R.E.M. Michael Stipe <laughs> and Bill Berry. Thanks for being here, guys. Sure, certainly, Kyla. So, what are we going to talk about now? <laughs> okay, let's uh, try to take two. That was good, though. I think my dress is falling out. <sighs> What? Oh, you mean say a different Didn't I say that? The timing was nice, yeah, but we wanted to change the... If it doesn't feel off, you can see talking. Oh, you mean just cut out the sitting? The name. But then I can't describe them as easily. Yeah, I did. Mean, that was pretty Thank nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I like the idea. <laughs> Adjective. Yes, so that's the question. What are you worried about? You're worried about laughing. I think I'm the intro. Just this one without this one. Oh, okay. That's all. It's not a funny matter. I don't know why I was chuckling. Can I have your piece of paper? Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Very good. But I'll just put it in my own words. I'll, I'll do it, but just not laugh. How about that? Yeah, I that one is probably what we're using. Are we still rolling? Yes, yes. So we've got all of this on tape? Yes, all of the tape. My entire <laughs> life is on tape now. Okay. Hang on a second here. Okay. Do you want me to go? No. 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 Thank you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Shall I use this as a boa? I'm sorry. <laughs> Somehow. Sorry. Here. It's all right here? All right. I have the pleasure to be sitting here talking to the absolutely adorable and charming Michael Stive and Bill Berry from the band R.E.M. Thanks for being here, guys. I like the first one better. Okay. It was more ad hoc. Is that okay? Okay. How was that audio with the... Uh... Love up again here. Do you want to do a no, no, I think that's fine. I'm not fine. sweating, so. We have speed. Here, Lady Jo. I know she can't Camera see me sweat. Is ready. You guys ready? Give me two minutes. I'm okay. one minute. Tell me when. I'm talking with the totally charming and attractive Mr. Michael Stipe. <laughs> I'm, just fine I'm not. I'm going to run out of adjectives. <laughs> I mean, what am I going to say next? I feel like I'm using this stuff over That's and perfect. over. That's good. You can. Uh, there's a little more projection. She yes. Now I've got to level up. Okay. Thank you. Usually they tell me to be quiet. Is that cool? Okay. I'm talking with the totally charming and attractive uh, Michael Stipe and Bill Berry from the band REM. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Can't wait to hear you play. That's fine. Okay. That's okay. Good. Great. Now we're just going to stand by. I'll just give you some verbal cues. So far, so good. So, in about 30 seconds, I want you both to go Steve? positively call oh, the call. Oh, uh, fabulous. No. <laughs> Let me see. All right. Oh, that was very good. Very good. <laughs> Don't make faces. No, no. Sure, I am. 
I had no control over this face. The eyebrows are going about 12 different directions and... Uh, Look at his eyebrow. So anyway... <laughs> that that runs say, in my family, I want you to know. I used to pluck it. My mother said, Bill, that's a sure sign of vanity. I, I was really embarrassed about it, so I stopped. Really? Well, my brother, I'm shocked, at 27 decided to get braces and have his eyebrows Bill? have electrolysis here. Michael just looked towards the desk. And, but he looks great. I mean, he, he wanted to do it and he did. You know, I thought that was kind of brave in a way, especially because he still lives in the Midwest in a mm -hmm. small town and like that's not exactly the norm, you know. <laughs> yeah, I went through that when I was, I went through twice, braces twice. The first guy was sued because he didn't do a good job, so that was pretty traumatic. Oh no, so you had to go through all those like little, that was the worst. All my wisdom teeth are coming in right now. They are? Yeah, they're making my teeth go like that. Okay. What's that? Mine never, well, one of them I had to have taken out, but the rest of them just decided not to show up, I guess. Really? Yeah, I guess they didn't, I mean, they're not there. And, and I, you know, I had one removed. It was a horrible experience. <laughs> I had eight pulled at one time. <gasps> four, that's the face we should get. Four wisdom, four wisdom teeth and the four eye teeth all at once. You know, at 12, this tooth bothered me. I mean, now I, I don't even notice it, but it stuck out just a little bit more than it should. You have fine teeth. And it's still sticking there, so what the... <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, so look really interested in me now. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> look like I'm not totally embarrassing us all. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not very good I'm at making acting. this tough. I should have a wrap down. Like, that was good. <laughs> really, I should like. Somebody get the hook. Carlos got to be rude. I should. I should memorize some kind of a joke time. I'm out of the picks. And yes, I'm just. I can't wait to Bill. see you guys oh, live. Look at Bill. That's I'm sorry. Fine. I, well, that's right. I don't have to show. <laughs> that's fine stuff. Yeah. Okay, now it's Bill's turn. Open wide, Bill. Good. So, uh, Winston and Sam, I don't. They were involved. They know Jefferson, so uh, they were involved in, I guess, the Budweiser thing you did. Did you do a Budweiser thing in Florida? Yeah, you don't. Just shake your head. You, have to. <laughs> you did. I did a bad commercial with it. Uh, Would you sit up a little bit? Just sort of like, yeah. You did a Budweiser commercial? Yes, I mm -hmm. did. Oh. I, I prostituted myself. <laughs> no, I, I just think that's really interesting. I've hey, it's my favorite beer. Uh, that's one thing well, I don't even drink, drink beer, which is so I'm silly. Sorry. But... I'm sorry. You just have to sit there and take lots oh. of views. Um, oh. To, We're having a finally having a You're in a good position. position. No, it's fine. Uh, just uh, you're in a good position, but then I, when we start rolling again. First album and wanted to use it in in their one of their radio commercials. And I, That's great, though. Yeah, it was It was really kind of a kick. Other, I guess the Tubes did one, or they did done one after me, but like Jimmy Cliff, this reggae guy, did one. And uh, what's that guy's name? Just hold a look at Michael. I forget this guy. Uh, I'm over here. Little smile for me. <laughs> That's a very cool look. <laughs> Okay, look over there at Michael. We've so got to we'll get two cameras. We'll get two cameras. That's what we need so that we don't have to go through this. That's great. We're happy. We did. We're done. Thanks for putting up with all this.